Good afternoon, loves. Welcome back to Life Adventures and Keto. My name is Michelle. I hope you can hear me okay. It's a beautiful windy day here in Northwest Tennessee. Today's video is a collaboration with Vicki Marie Living Life. If you do not know who Vicki Marie is, I implore you to go by after this video and say hello to Vicki. She is going to be dropping a video in regards to this as well. We are going to be doing a collaboration on the Miracle Morning Routine. It is a 30 day result on the Miracle Morning Routine. What we found helpful and maybe some things that we didn't find helpful on the Miracle Morning Routine and how we suit it to our purpose. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please do come back. Beautiful to find out what to say. No more hate. Just admit that you're just a so again, it is on the Miracle Morning Routine by Hal Elrod. He has come up with some great information in this book. So I hope that you stay to the end. And I hope that if this sounds like something you're interested in, that you'll pick up a book as well. Um, I have found it at my local library, so you might be able to check it out as well. Also, he's got an online community that I was not aware of, according to Vicki Marie in her last video in regards to Hal Elrod. So you could do this totally online. So... It is the not so obvious secret guaranteed to transform your life before 8 a.m. Now, spoiler alert, before you get too far into this video, I do not do all of my Miracle Morning routine in the a.m. I have a very busy day and a lot of the times in the morning, I already have a routine going and that is to help me out in the evening um, routine. So I cook some in the morning and do some other things in the morning, but I do take, take my books along for the whole day in case I have time or I need to do a part of the Miracle Morning at a different time of the day besides before 8 a.m. Although totally workable to your schedule, that is one of the things I think I love the best about this routine is that you can do it any time of the day. You don't necessarily have to do it just first thing in the morning. So again, it is the Miracle Morning routine and if you are not familiar with the routine, I go over the basis of the routine in a video that I will hopefully put up here in the cards for you to go watch so that you can see the outline of the whole book. But um, I did use Find Rest to read as what I'm reading here. And I bought myself a lovely doodle diary to keep all of my notes in. So um, I hope that you stay tuned again to this. So let's get going. He breaks down these Miracle Morning routines as life savers. S-A-V-E-R-S. Life savers okay you guys so when Hal was at his lowest he started researching what other people done in their beginning morning routine that led them to be successful and he put a bunch of different people's things in this book and called them life savers so I want to read one excerpt of the book I think that it's necessary to give you background on the miracle morning routine it says don't place unnecessary limitations on what you want for your life. Think bigger than you've allowed yourself to think up until this point. Get clear on what you truly want. Condition yourself to the belief that it's possible by focusing on and affirming it every day. And then consistently move in the direction of your vision until it becomes your reality. There is nothing to fear because you cannot fail. Only learn, grow, and become better than you've ever been before. It is also highly recommended that you get an accountability partner and I believe that's what me and Vicki Marie are doing together here. We have communicated behind the scenes just a couple of times but I hope that she is doing well on her journey as well for this 30 years. Okay so the six lifesavers are the six practices guaranteed to save you from a life of unfulfilled potential. Stressed, overwhelmed, frustrated, and unfulfilled. Not exactly where you want to be, right? Me either. So again, it's Life Savers. S-A-V-E-R-S. -E S is for silence. And here is how I perform silence for myself. I do include some meditation along with the silence practice. So here comes my silence. A 
A is for affirmations. On the affirmations part of this, I do use Mel Robbins a lot for my affirmations, as long as well as Trent Shelton. So, who do you use for your affirmations? So, here is my A for affirmations. High five, girl. High five. You got this. V is for visualization. And what do you consider visualization? Now, I did not make a board or anything of that nature, but I do sit quietly and visualize what I want my lifestyle to be. What I want my lifestyle to be for a little while from here forward. Now, he breaks down the visualization into three parts here in the book. One is get ready. Two, visualize what you really want. And three, visualize who you need to be and what you need to do. He also says create a vision board. Now, I'm not crafty in that way, and nor do I think that the visualization board will help me. But if that is your jam, go for it. Here's what I do for my visualization. Hey guys, so for my visualization, most of the times what I do is while I'm driving and during um, my downtime, I just think about what we want to do, my husband and I, out of the house. We want to live a smaller lifestyle, as in a smaller household, a one-story household, um, living off the land more than not, and um, bringing in like some solar power things and just being self-sustainable. So I really think about those kinds of things during this last 30 days as to where I want to be, where I want to go. I really want to get up on time. I want to be on time. I want to be a better friend, a mother, a better wife, a better person. I want to be kind always. I want to help others. I mean, there's just a lot of things, but my visualizations a lot of times are here in the car. E is for exercise. Now, I incorporate two kinds of exercise along for this A Miracle Morning Routine. Two types of exercise. So let me show you what I do for exercise. R is for reading. Now I used to love reading, but holding an actual book in my hand this is a leather bound book as well, is um, something that I think I crave more than a book online or something. So um, see, I pulled out this because I finished my book for this 30 days. So um, it's Find Rest, A Woman's Devotional for Lasting Peace in a Busy Life. Shanti Feldham. Feld, Feldhan, Feldhan, Shanti, what does that say? <laughs> Shanti Feldhan. Okay, you guys, so R is for reading, and sometimes it's not all about the morning time. Sometimes I fit this in where I can. So today, I'm on a coffee break, so coffee cheers. And so for this five minutes, I'm going to be reading a passage. I decided to go back and reread to you day one. I'm way further than that now, but I thought it was a good suggestion. So we're doing the Miracle Morning Routine, Lifesavers, and R is for reading. I'm reading from Fine Rest, A Women's Devotional for Lasting Peace in a Busy Life, Shanti Feldon. Feld, Feldon. Day one. Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your souls, Jeremiah 6.16. Finding your good way. This chapter is um, called Built Only on Rock. So, finding your good way. When I moved to New York in 1994, I spent a lot of time on the subway. Always busy, I enjoyed speeding under the gridlock traffic to quickly reach my destination. Most of Manhattan is laid out in a clear grid pattern with numbered streets, so getting around is easy. As long as you know where you are, you know exactly where to go. I'm at 32nd and Park, so I just need to head north two blocks and turn right 
on 34th Street. There's just one hitch. When you come off the subway at an unfamiliar stop, how do you know where you are? Surrounded by tall buildings, you have no sense of direction. In those days, there was an easy solution. We would turn in a circle until we spotted the Twin Towers, which were clearly visible at the southern tip of Manhattan. We knew that was south, so we could use that landmark to determine where we were and where to go. We based our sense of direction on the Twin Towers because they were fixed and unmoving. Until they weren't, on September 11, 2011, every New Yorker and every person on the planet really saw the truth that all man-made things are temporary. In a crazy modern life, in our crazy modern lives, each of us is looking for direction. How do we get to that life of peace and joy we want, rather than the stressed and frazzled life we have? All too often, we base our decisions on things that loom large in our eyes, convenience, the advice of friends, whether it, vo it avoids pain or brings pleasure, but those factors are a fickle guide. We are stressed and frazzled because we have followed temporary directional signals that do not lead to peace, the good way, as the prophet Jeremiah put it. Jesus quoted the prophet Jeremiah when he said there is only one way to find that good way, taking on his yoke and learning from him, Matthew eleven twenty nine. We must stop looking to temporary signals for a sense of direction. We must look to the one who both never changes and is gentle with our human frazzled state. As we will see on day two, his yoke, guiding force, will never pull us astray. So she wants you to put notes here, and here is the reflection. Think of a decision, small or large, that is causing you stress that you need to make in the coming days. What temporary things might you be looking to for a sense of direction? For example, the path of least resistance at the moment, or what your colleagues are suggesting you do? What unchanging truth can you look to instead? I worked these notes in my doodle diary. Um, I didn't want to write in this book as I may give it along. When I understand that everything happening to me is to make me more Christ-like, it resolves a great deal of anxiety. A.W. Tozer. Okay, you guys, so another chapter in the book, Find Rest, that I really resonated with and I wanted to read to you today. So we're going to do two for reading, and I thought it was something interesting and something that I could share. So this is um, day 20 for the book. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Philippians 1, 9 through 10. It has to be finished. Do you ever think you're a bit obsessive about having to finish a particular task that you've engrossed in? Most of us have that quirk, and it results causes us a lot of unnecessary regret. Laurie came to this realization when her kids reached high school. She decided to have a garage sale to sell off all the good condition grade school stuff and have an excuse to trash the stained clothes, smelly rollerblades, and partial play mobile sets. Soon, though, her goal expanded to include the two walk-in attic storage areas. She describes it in this way. An intoxicating power of minimalism came over me. What a great opportunity to get rid of everything we didn't currently use in case we decided to finish off the largest space in, into a guest bedroom. Obsessed with getting rid of 25 years of clutter, the simple project mushroomed into a two-headed behemoth. After several consecutive weeks of preparing for the now monster garage sale, my friend finally realized that her family was eating only pizzas and McDonald's and bumming rides to activities, and there may have been a few times that her telephone voice was a tad sweeter to the sales reps than to her family when they interrupted her great purge of the century. Sound familiar? My friend asked God for help to break the it-has-to-be-finished cycle. He gave her an idea to help her pay attention to what's really important. She calls it slow, surrender, listen, obey, and walk away. I'm going to read that again. My friend asked God for help to break the it has to be finished cycle. He gave her an idea to help her pay attention to what's really important. She calls it slow, surrender, listen, obey, walk away. First, I surrender the it-has-to-be-done list to my greater call. 
Can this activity be done later? Does it really have to be done at all? Listen to that quiet, still voice inside. If my priorities are wrong, he will tell me. Will I listen, then obey? If taking my elderly mother out for coffee is truly the what is best thing for now, I need to ask God to help me overcome my compelling drive to finish the task. Then quickly walk away from the task before getting sucked back into it again. If necessary, I can delegate the task or perhaps reschedule the completion for another time. When are we driven by our it has to be done compulsion? We run over those most in our way and we often have regrets. By taking it slow, we know we gave our best energy and time to the people and projects that truly matter most. This is called, this chapter was called Set Aside Superwoman. Reflect. When in the past have you been so compelled to finish something that you ran over a more important priority? What are you working on now that might need a slow approach? And again, slow is surrender, listen, obey, walk away. I love that. Wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. William Shakespeare. Anyway, you guys, that's our for reading. I'll put a link to this book in the description box. And last but not least is S for scribing, which is what I have done here in my doodle diary, as well as this book has some note sections in it as well, you guys. I feel like it, if you have something that you need to work through, I really think it helps me to write it down to work through it. And this really did help me put some things into perspective. I really hope that you appreciate the collaboration that Vicki and I have put to you today. The Miracle Morning Routine has really, really, really been a good section for me. Along with my ketogenic diet, I'm going a cleaner keto diet, as well as working the Miracle Morning Routine has really helped me work through some things that needed to be worked through and has been a long time coming. I live a very fast-paced lifestyle, fast-paced in the an aspect of uh, I work a lot of hours, and especially this time of year. Because I'm, but at any rate, you guys, um, I really appreciated this go-round with the Miracle Morning Routine. I've worked the plan before, but this time it really helped me. The first thing it really helped me with is I was on time for several days in a row. And you may be thinking, wow, I'm on time every day. I work for myself. I schedule myself. These people know when I say 8 o'clock, it's 8-ish. I get off at 4 o'clock, which is 4-ish, depending on the 8-ish that I got there. You see what I'm saying? And so they they have come to know this, and they're all okay with it. But, but I was not okay with it because I would be lax and more likes and then I would be there later and later and then it would take up more of my day than I anticipated it taking and then everything else got rushed and put behind and so when you sit down and you make a plan and you work a plan like the miracle morning routine it's all there for you in black and white when you're reading it and you're writing it and you're reading other words to inspire yourself it really helped me become on time now, I also had some personal things to deal with in my life that has happened that I've just kind of, I dealt with it a little bit, but I didn't really work through it, but I've also worked through here, like my mother's passing and um, some other family things, and it, it really helped me put down my ideas, like a mind dump kind of thing, you know, mind dumping in the doodle diary, just putting it all out there so that the entire day I'm not working that thought process over and over and over again. I am an overthinker and I do have some anxiety problems and so if I ever get that stuck in my head, a negative thought, um, things from the past and it will go on and on and on over in my head just over and over until it's again a burden for me which it shouldn't be now and it shouldn't have been then but you see what I'm saying I would overthink about it and get it stuck in my head and then let it ruin the day 
and I don't need to let anyone else take that from me you guys so that is another thing I have brought from the miracle morning routine is that you're not your thoughts and you're also not going to work out every thought that comes into your head also the things coming up in my life never warranted that kind of overthinking because it never became a problem like my head had put a problem but the workings out of real life never was a problem the overthinking was the problem so I've quit that a lot I mean a lot I've really gave that up so that is another reason why I think this is helping um, I'm gonna keep working the program because I don't think 30 days is enough but 30 days is enough to start a habit and so I hope to make all of these life savers habits from here forward I hope that you get something out of this I hope that you look into it if you need to deal with some of those issues that I have dealt with anyway you guys keto on and keto strong thank you so much to Vicki Marie for coming along with me on this collaboration journey 30 day journey I really got a lot out of it so I hope that you get a lot out of it too you know there's a lot here that can be again it's called the miracle morning routine but you can work this at any time of the day not just the morning and I hope that I showed you that so anyway you guys thanks for being here today and again thank you Vicki keto on and keto strong and I'll see you right back here next time again I hope you can hear me because it's really windy today